Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today's video is a what's for dinner. I have three dinner ideas I'll share today, including a really easy chili recipe. We've had colder weather lately, so we've added that to the menu. And I'll also be making a homemade pizza from scratch, the dough, sauce, everything. And it turned out amazing, so I can't wait to share that. And then lastly, I'll be making a butter beef recipe that's been circulating lately and I'm giving my opinion on that so I hope you guys enjoy the video so we're gonna start out with the chili recipe chili is something that I never make the same way twice uh, I just normally use what we have on hand if I'm out of something then it's not a big deal I just make do with what we already have and if you guys have not noticed we did get a Dutch oven we got them on sale at Sam's Club I think they were like $59 for a set of two so it was a really good deal and we're excited to finally have a Dutch oven we've always wanted one so yeah if I can find them I will link them down below but I'm just cutting up some onion and bell pepper and we're gonna go ahead and get that in the pot with the ground beef and this is bell pepper that we had in the refrigerator if I was gonna go buy bell pepper to make this chili with I would buy green just because it adds color to the chili but all I had was yellow and orange so that's what I used and I actually think it turned out really pretty it had a pretty fall vibe to it So once I have the onion and pepper going with the meat, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of minced garlic and give that a stir. Next up, I'm gonna add in a can of diced tomatoes. I'm not gonna drain anything. I want all the juices in there. I'm also gonna add in a can of kidney beans. And I will have this can opener linked down below. This is the Kitchen Mama hands-free battery operated can opener and I absolutely love it. So I will have it linked down below for you guys. I'm also gonna add in a can of tomato sauce. And we're just going to give that a quick stir. So normally I like to add beef broth to my chili. It just adds some extra flavor. However, we didn't have any beef broth, but we did have this packet of beef flavoring left over from a ramen packet. So I'm gonna dissolve that down into a cup of water and then I'm gonna pour that into the chili and because I did add this in, I didn't add any salt and it was perfect. And now for the chili seasoning, I'm adding in two tablespoons of this chili -o. And that's all for our ingredients. The next thing we will do is place the lid on and just let this simmer for about 20 or 30 minutes on low and let all of those flavors come together. About the last five minutes or so, I added in some garlic breadsticks to the air fryer, and that's what we had with our chili. Normally, we would have crackers or something like that, but we didn't have any, so we had these in the freezer, and I thought they would go really good, so we did those instead. And I will have my air fryer linked down below. I get lots of questions on it, so I will have that linked. It's by far the quietest air fryer I've ever owned. So 
so that's what the chili looked like I think with the orange and yellow bell pepper it had a really pretty fall vibe going with it like I said it has been cooler weather lately so we have been looking forward to this Next up, we're gonna make a homemade pizza from scratch. I'm gonna start with the dough. I'll put the dough recipe that I used in the description box below, but I'm starting out with some water, sugar, and yeast, and then we're gonna let that mix for a good 45 minutes until it is kind of frothy looking. And then in a separate bowl, I'm gonna mix together all of my dry ingredients and then we will incorporate that into the mixer with the wet ingredients. This is a really easy dough recipe and it really took no time to put together. So I'm just gonna pour in my oil and then we're gonna start incorporating that flour mixture into the mixer. And you'll also notice that I changed my paddle out to the hook because it is gonna be making a dough. I thought I would need the dough hook, <laughs> but you'll see in a minute, I actually go back and change it back to the paddle because the hook just wasn't mixing everything like I thought it should. I'm still learning how to use this KitchenAid mixer, but yeah, I just didn't know which one I was supposed to be using, so. <laughs> going to slowly add in that flour until my dough is formed. So as you can see, it is finally turning into a dough ball. So now what we can do is take a large bowl. I'm gonna spray that with some olive oil and then I'm gonna place my dough into the bowl and we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it rise for one hour. And to cover the bowl, I'm just using a plastic shower cap. They just seem to work out really good for that. So now while that's rising, I'm gonna start on the sauce. So I just have one can of tomato sauce. I'm gonna add in some garlic powder, onion powder, and Italian seasoning. And basically I just keep sprinkling each of those in until I get the taste just right. And I just keep tasting it with my finger and don't worry, I didn't use the same finger twice <laughs> to dip into the sauce. Um, and then I'm also going to add in some sugar to cut the acidity from the tomatoes um, and I just keep doing that until I get the flavor just like I want it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut up my produce. We had some bell pepper in the freezer and they're in larger pieces, so I wanted to cut those down into smaller pieces. So I'm gonna bake our pizzas in cast iron pans. So I'm just taking a little bit of olive oil and rubbing that along the bottom and the sides of the pan. I was afraid that the dough might stick, so this prevented the dough from sticking and our pizzas slid out perfect. So I'm just gonna take my dough and punch it down. And this dough recipe makes three one pound balls. So I'm gonna use two balls now for the pizzas. I'm gonna make a pizza for the kids and then a pizza for us. And then the third one will go in the freezer for a later time. That's the good thing about this recipe is that you can freeze it for later recipes and use it for really whatever you wanted to. It doesn't have to necessarily be pizza. 
Um, so I am just spreading that out into the bottom of my pan. So the kids just like sauce, cheese, and pepperoni on their pizza. So that's all I'm going to do for this one. And we didn't have any of the shredded mozzarella. All we had were the slices. So that's what I'm using. And yes, these pepperonis are huge. We got these at Sam's Club. So while the kids' pizza is in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble ours. On ours, I basically did the same thing, except I added in the onion and bell pepper. And I don't know why I did it this way, but I should have put the onion and the bell pepper before the cheese. But for whatever reason, I put the cheese first and then the onion bell pepper, but it's fine. It all worked out. So yeah, here's what the kids pizza looked like. I really didn't like the look of those mozzarella slices. I wish we would have had shredded, but it's all about using what you have and the taste was fine. So yeah, that is basically it for their pizza. And then our pizza was so so good it reminded me a lot of a pizza that you would find at like a real authentic restaurant the taste and everything was so good with the homemade pizza dough the homemade sauce it was just really good so huge hit on this like i said i will have that dough recipe down below and then the last thing i'm going to make is this butter beef recipe so for this, you just need a three pound roast, some Italian seasoning, ranch powder, and then you'll also need some banana pepper rings, a stick of butter, and a cup of water. And that is pretty much it. So this recipe is supposed to be better than the Mississippi roast or so, that's what I've heard. While this roast recipe is really good and it smelled fantastic while it was cooking, it still is not better than the Mississippi to me. I just really like that Mississippi roast. Um, but that's just personal preference. You might try it and you might think it's better, so definitely give it a try. It was so tender and so good. So we just had ours with some rice, green beans, carrots, and some homemade bread that we had made earlier in the week. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some dinner inspiration. Don't forget to check the description box below for recipe links. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.